Good evening, everybody, and welcome to The Late Show tonight. <laughs> welcome, everybody. I'm your host, Andy Evans. As always, my partner in crime, Justin Ames. My trusty partner in crime. And we have a fantastic show for you tonight. Starting off, uh, how about some good news? How about that? that so, uh, good. <laughs> yes, it does. So, uh, many Binghamton students received the Excelsior Scholarship, a new program started by Governor Cuomo to help students pay for college. It's offered at different SUNY and CUNY schools, and uh, it's a really great thing that they've done. So, we here at The Late Show tonight are going to start a segment that we like to call the Excelsior Scholarship by the Number. All right, I'll start it off. So, 998, that is the number of students at Binghamton who have received aid from the Excelsior Scholarship. 35, the average number of college credits taken by scholarship recipients before middle school. 12, <laughs> the number of hours spent outside in the past month of recipients collectively. 4, the number of friends of each recipient. 0, the total number of virginities taken. <laughs> and 120, the average number of IQ points higher than each of us in the studio. Now, uh, a few weeks ago was a Binghamton holiday that students reflect to refer to as Hollow Weekend. Now, for those unfamiliar, or AKA my parents, uh, so many students wear fun costumes and go downtown and get completely annihilated and make horrible decisions. But <laughs> the scariest part of Halloween weekend wasn't the sometimes awful costumes and the terrible regrets. It was the bus line. Students lined up en masse in the corner of State and Holly to try and save $4 on a trip back to campus. So really, it was nuts. The whole thing looked like a scene out of World War Z. The only thing that was missing was Brad Pitt and a disappointing ending. <laughs> <laughs> now, in more serious and unfortunately very real news, Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein was accused of sexually assaulting and or harassing more than 60 women. Now, we here at Blaze Show tonight condemn all of Weinstein's actions and our thoughts go out to those affected. Now, that being said, I can't help but compare Weinstein's actions to Sodexo here at Binghamton. I'm sorry, what? How are uh, Harvey Weinstein's actions like Sodexo? Well, when you want to get food from Sodexo, it's going to take forever, and when it's done, it'll taste horrible. <laughs> I just close my eyes and pretend it's something else. Lies, words, indeed. And finally, in probably the most bizarre story in the past few weeks, uh, a Binghamton police officer pulled over a student for a broken headlight. And when the officer inspected the student's car, he found a stop sign in the back seat. While arresting the student for theft, he found some other pretty interesting things in the car. Uh, now, all of these, I may remind you, are completely real. Uh, he found an open case of beer, a tool set, a sombrero, a pumpkin, and a live lobster. Now, <laughs> this was Halloween weekend, so I understand the beer. It, uh, now, shouldn't drive like that, but I understand. The tool set, the pumpkin and sombrero, it's, look, it's Halloween. You gotta be festive. I understand. But the lobster. Why the lobster? How, is, how do you justify that one? I mean, was it a fun date night with your girlfriend? I, do you like to tame and breed exotic pets? Was it seafood night in the dining hall? I, I mean, did the, lo did the lobster buy the beer for you? Like, I just, I don't understand. Now, the only thing that I really want to know is... The officer handcuffed the lobster and just put rubber bands on his claws. <laughs> <laughs> now, being as this is probably the most interesting story to come out of Binghamton, I have to know more. I'm going to have the guys in post throw my personal email across the screen here, somewhere, wherever I'm gesturing. Please, if you have any information regarding this case, I am begging you, send me something. We'll have you on the show, for God's sake. <laughs> I need to know about this lobster. <laughs> Well, anyway, we've got a great show for you guys tonight. We have uh, graduate student Rahul Bala here to talk about his experiences as a, uh, as a graduate student in finance. He's going to do a little bit of stand-up for us, too, so look forward to that. And we'll be right back with a special segment right after these words. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a special treat for you, a special segment we like to call Halloween Fashion Police with Henry Sinnott. Thank you, Andrew. Andy. <laughs> Good evening, Binghamton. In breaking Halloween news, in a surprising twist of events, nurses this year dressed up as college chicks. Now onto some hot takes. 
Britney Spears costumes. I saw a lot of these all downtown. It was crazy. There were so many Britney Spears's, specifically schoolgirl Britney from the Hit Me Baby One More Time music video. <laughs> and I just, I'm just confused because I always thought, like, that's not peak Britney. Like, if you're trying to dress up as peak Britney Spears, you go for mid-2000s Britney, you shave your head. I just don't, I just, why not go all the way? Not, why not go hardcore with Britney? Come on. Uh, I also saw a lot of Rick and Mortys from the show Rick and Morty on uh, Adult Swim. And when I asked them about their costumes, I was told I probably wouldn't get it because I don't have a good enough grasp on theoretical physics. I just, you're dressed up as a cartoon character from Adult Swim. Half of you are dressed up as pickles. Get over yourself and just tell me what it is. You know what? I don't care anymore. Okay, and finally, the last costume. Okay, well, it might not have been a costume. So I either saw a lot of girls dressed up as Playboy bunnies, or I saw a lot of Playboy bunnies lost without, a, without direction after their recent displacement following the death of Hugh Hefner. Rest in peace, Huff. You know, Hugh Hefner is probably one of the only few people on this entire planet where going to heaven is just a lateral move for him. He like, yeah. For me, like, going to heaven, like, oh my god, I would get so much cool stuff. I'd get, like, ice cream. Oh my god, awesome. <laughs> Hugh Hefner, sideways at most. It honestly could be a step down for him. I wouldn't know. <laughs> all right, that's all the Halloween fashion well, movies. Henry, you know, you're so critical of everybody else's Halloween costume, but what were you? Garbage. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. Like, this buff dude, 
and he, he was just like, uh, it was a fitness trainer, I was doing so much in, uh, internships, on, and for me, it's just like, yeah, this guy's an international student, and he's like, ah, it's sort of funny. <laughs> it's sort of like affirmative action, but for comedy. <laughs> uh, but be honest, did somebody cancel? Who canceled? <laughs> We Nobody actually get Ellen DeGeneres. Oh, nah. yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's like the order that goes. Ellen DeGeneres, I'll oh, give me a whole. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, to start off, uh, so, you're, so you're a transfer student, um, so this is your first time international student, right? right. Well, transfer from. I did transfer from it, yeah. <laughs> so technically, I'm not wrong. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, when did you first arrive in the States? Uh, it's been about a year now, a um, year and two months, maybe. And yeah, wow. it was pretty cool. Fantastic. So where, uh, so where in India are you originally from? Uh, New Delhi. I'm like oh. a city city. Oh, oh yeah. nice. It's great. like one of the only places that I know there. Oh, awesome. <laughs> That's who uh, 1307 represents. <laughs> You're probably the most gangster. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this is how gangsters look in India. What <laughs> are <laughs> uh, things about America coming, coming from India? Oh, but there's a lot of good things like America. Like, first, okay, I gotta say, like, the people are way nice here. Like, uh, I don't want to give like a bad reputation to it, but it's just like there are people like too nice. And but I, I heard like people say about like, oh, the city is filled with like these rude people and it's yeah, popular. Yeah, I was going to say, where in uh, the States have you gone so Yeah, far? yeah, I know, like, I can see comparatively, but I just feel like it's, I feel like that's cute because from, if you're in Delhi, you probably like, if you're talking to anyone rudely, you're probably getting fed. <laughs> so, wow. No, this is a joke, uh, but uh, cause, like, when I came here, <laughs> when I came here uh, to, uh, I first went to New York, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was walking around, and I bumped into this guy, right? And I was, because like I'm used to like the deli crowd, so I just like I was almost ready to get stabbed or like hit in the face. <laughs> and then he did something like unimaginable, and he said, "Oh, I'm sorry, dude." And I was legit shook for a second. I'm like, <laughs> I was not prepared for that. I was like, okay, how does this happen? Like, but yeah, like people are nice. The, yeah. So uh, talking about uh, overly nice people, crosswalks. Uh, are they different like here than they are in India? Crosswalks, you mean you know when you're yeah crossing. when you're when you're crossing the street like people yeah. Are uh, for you. I don't know. If somebody said this already, but they're like the traffic lights in India are not rules, they're not traffic rules, mm. they're light suggestions. Right? <laughs> so when I see like people like a big like a truck or a big car coming in and people are just crossing the street based on the signal, I'm like, oh man, are you risking your life <laughs> legit based on the signal? But yeah, there's like some differences right there. Yeah, fair enough. So uh, why specifically come to Binghamton of all the places to go to in the United States? Well <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, like even coming to the US was a big like why US, right? Because right. like I was sitting at home like a year like like last May June July like that, around that that time and I was thinking oh man this Trump guy is gonna win <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> xenophobia is yeah. on the rise hate crimes are on the rise mom pack my bags I'm going to the U S <laughs> <laughs> and but, but but like honestly it's because uh, it's a public university so the like the tuition fees is obviously low, of course, of course. Mm -hmm. and especially when you factor in the exchange rate, stuff like that. At least that's what I tell people, cause, <laughs> cause like being on the waiting list of Parnell doesn't. <laughs> that was like the real reason. Hey man, listen, we've all been there. <laughs> right? no. They call they call the public Ivy for a reason. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so now that you're here, you're in Binghamton. Um, so uh, what are you studying? Oh, I'm doing my MBA, and my concentration right. is finance. So why specifically finance? That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I want to uh, roll with your questions. Today. <laughs> yeah, another good question. Uh, well, it wasn't like mo not my decision, like a hundred percent, but yeah. it was like throughout my life, like shit got like canceled out for me. So <laughs> like when I was in the fifth grade, we had like the standardized test, right? So my parents wanted me to be a doctor. Shocking, right? But, <laughs> but like in the fifth grade, they were like. Uh, like they went to my parent teacher conference and my teachers were like, Yeah, this guy's not getting gonna be a doctor. <laughs> like just imagine like your teachers deciding careers in a fifth I mean they were spot on. Like I'm not gonna <laughs> well, like just like that whole thing for uh, so Yeah, they're savage with you. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And then in the so they were like, Okay, so if you're not gonna be a doctor, it'll be an engineer, right? Do like the most stereotypical thing there is. So <laughs> and uh, at that point 
I just was like, okay, and then in the, we had another standardized test when we were like in high school, like right before ending high school, and then again, the teachers were like, yeah, you gotta get into something else because engineering is still difficult for him. And then my friends were like, you know what, like we'll get, let you do finance and accounting, and then that was like like my last resort. So yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but I'm also like good at math and stuff, so I kind of like it too. All right, yeah, that's great. They haven't been treating you well. Yeah, the so states have been treating you well. Um, listen, I'm surprised you. <laughs> yeah, man. Normally, yeah. normally people have uh, much worse coming to America stories. Oh, I mean, yeah, it's true, but like I had my priority story. Mm. Like, like the day I landed, I had like Tinder installed. And, <laughs> of course. So yeah. like, Tinder oh, so you're big on Tinder. Yeah, like I'm not big on Tinder, but yeah, I try to do Tinder as much. And the reject like. It's totally a different ball game. Oh, so so they do have Tinder in India. There is, but it's like half the girls are looking to get arranged marriage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is not true. <laughs> I, I got to get married away. But yeah, like, uh -huh. like I'll say like because I had Tinder in India for like a year or two, and I had like three matches, and now I've been here for a year, and I have like four hundred or something. Well, you got the attractive yeah. foreigner going for you. Yeah, no yeah, uh, yeah. I got the brownie point. <laughs> Alrighty, 23 years old. Yeah. Um, so in general, what do you do most weekends? Like, um, are you going out with friends? Do you? Yeah, well, like I feel like again, because I'm like 20. How old are you guys? You're at the 19. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are really talented. The 19 year old. Wow. That was so uh, patronizing. But you know, I mean, well, I try. But what I'm <laughs> definitely didn't say that. that. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just happy to be called talented. <laughs> I'm happy to be called something. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I because I just turned twenty three, so I feel like going to the bars. It just like feels a little bit weird, honestly. <laughs> like it's not a bad thing. I just like people have to force me to go to the bars, and because like I had a really horrendous experience when like my first experience with the bars, because when I, so when I came here, I was like just turning twenty two, mm -hmm. and my friends to, took me to the rat. Okay, ah, uh, yes. Yeah, right? <laughs> but, so that for me was like a really bad experience. Cause like, as soon as I got in, the crowd there, I was like, yo, I could babysit like <laughs> Right? Like, any any bar where the bouncers actually shook that you've given him a legit ID, it's a shame. <laughs> and I went to uh, this other bar called the Galaxy Brewing Company. So oh, you, that's, yeah, that's so yeah, a restaurant then. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. And the average customer age, I'm pretty sure, is like 150. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I believe it. Yeah, the so you hit both ends of the spectrum. You got yeah, yeah, exactly. You hit 18 year olds and you hit 100 year olds. No. It's, it's not in between with you. The mm -hmm. oldest guy in America, I'm pretty sure, is like 125, so I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, now I've found like a balance, like a colonial, like go out whenever I possibly can. But I'm just like one of those Netflix people who just likes to stay inside. That's yeah. on his Tinder profile, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the, the only thing that's coming out of this is that I'm never getting like Tinder matches again. <laughs> <laughs> you are never getting Tinder matches again, or getting all the Tinder matches again? All. <laughs> Good point. Depends on the editing, though. <laughs> Definitely. You're involved in bands and stand up, it's all me. Yeah, like I started this year to do a Bing stand up, which is like the community mm. on campus. I did stand up in India before coming here. And yeah, uh, it's uh, sort of like a good way to get to meet you know new funny people. And okay. yeah, I know. And I try to do some in the city too. And like do whatever I can. It's just like a good experience, honestly. Yeah, it's fun, fun thing. So are the crowds here uh, better or worse than in India? Uh, good, good question. That's an amazing question. You're on a roll too, man. Uh, <laughs> yes. So are you, I, are you I sandals like... around you in India? <laughs> <laughs> not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. But over here, I think like, especially in Binghamton, because it's a college town. I think the crowds are just like a little bit PC, so yeah, I have to be careful. Definitely. And anything like that goes like a little over, you gotta be like, oh man, yeah, you gotta calm down. <laughs> and yeah, but in India, you can say shit whatever you want. I mean, and but the thing is, over here, the retribution comes in forms of like, you know, people will like start a petition against you or whatever. In India, they just beat the shit out of you. Honestly, <laughs> so that's like the only difference. Okay. If you like offend someone, but uh, other than that, comedy's comedy. It's like people are funny and people just beat the shit everywhere. So. Cool. Right. So, um, probably two of the sets for us to do today, right? I actually don't, but I would do it. I'll just do it. <laughs>
All right, so uh, we'll be right back. Ghoul's gonna have a comedy set for us, and uh, we'll be right back after these words. All right, thank you so much for being here. I just want to mention before I start that there are literally five people in the audience. Yeah. Which, which is actually three more people than I'm used to. <laughs> so this is actually a step forward for me. <laughs> but you know the good thing is, if anybody is during the show is like, oh, can only three people are laughing, that means the joke's working. Yeah. <laughs> All right, first I gotta say, it's an absolute honor to be performing here in front of you guys at Bully Show. <laughs> it's an absolute honor. And because I've loved comedy, I always wanted to do stand up. Just pretty ironic because the only time I've ever made anyone laugh is when I told them I was going to do stand-up comedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they were laughing at me, so I don't know if that counts. Uh, yeah, there's two types of comedians I hate, though. One are those who repeat jokes. <laughs> and second are those who don't know when a bit is over and keep doing the same thing as though it's no longer funny. You know, those comedians. <laughs> uh, yeah, my mom's texting me. I'm not looking at the jokes. <laughs> Yeah, okay, yeah. So, I just want to preface that I've been in America for about a year now. That's, I'm just only saying that because, you know, understandably, my English is going to be way better than any of you guys. So, I apologize about that. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, so, it wasn't that hard of a, of a change for me coming from Delhi. But, it was just like little things, like my name being pronounced a little bit different. Because I feel like there's a U in there, which messes most Americans up, because my name's Rahul. And I don't know, most Americans call me a pussy ass bitch ass faggot. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, linguistic differences, what are you gonna do, right? <laughs> so, my dad told me before coming here that there's two things I, I can't do one is getting in fights with people, and two, not eating steak. For the same reason, because I can't have any beef. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, <yeah, same> that's <laughs> I try to keep the jokes light today because uh, I gotta confess, Andrew told me to keep it light and funny and family friendly. So I'm just gonna try it all just light jokes today. So, anyway, my girlfriend died last year from cancer. <laughs> uh, but that whole experience taught me a lot of things. Mostly that necrophilia is pretty underrated. <laughs> yeah, no, but, uh, that, was a, that was a joke, okay? It's actually all, it's a, actually pretty good. <laughs> so, here's what I don't get about necrophilia. How do you get caught? Like, <laughs> like there's no zombies out there with the writing op-ed pieces for the New York Times, right? <laughs> so I think you should be pretty good on that front. The only thing I could think of is someone walking in on you while you're having, you're doing your business. And at that point, like, first of all, turn it around on him. Why is that guy barging in on people having sex, dead or alive? It's none of his business. <laughs> right? And second, and more importantly, you could just put on sunglasses on the body, do like a whole weekend at Bernie's thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, okay, that was a hard joke. Uh, I'm going to go something lighter. Uh, abortion, right? <laughs> so my, uh, I like my friend was telling me about how, of like, what the sides, what the political issue about abortion is, because like I didn't know, and I was trying to see what like the other side is. And then he told me like some anti-abortion people blow up clinics for uh, like abortion clinics. And I'm sorry, that legit made zero sense to me, because if anything, okay, here's what I think, right? Presumably you're gonna have to blow up the clinic during working hours, right? And at that point, there are going to be women in there. There are going to be like pregnant women in there for checkups or whatever. So, if anything, if you think about it, if anything, you're doing group abortions very efficiently in a time-saving manner. Right? <laughs> Might as well put out a Groupon and like. <laughs> <laughs> and be like, come on down, postnatal abortions are on us. <laughs> right. uh, uh, I'm gonna stop there before I get deported because of saying this offensive shit. <laughs> Thank you guys, and good night. All right, thank you guys, that's our show. Uh, come back next week, we'll have probably another guest. And that's it, thanks for watching the show. That's it, that's all we got. Good night.